Hey guys, what's going on? So today I'm going to be going over my Tales of Tribute guide for you guys, okay? So at the time of making this video, I'm currently rank 4 on my server. And I finished the last season at rank 6, okay? And got the nice little rewards with all the gems. So I'm okay at the game. I'm pretty decent at the game. You know, I'm in the top, like, couple of percent of players. So just quickly before we jump into the video itself, I just want to make it clear that there's no way to win every single game. You're going to lose some games because of luck, okay? So... Just to make that clear like you don't always lose because you're the worst player sometimes you lose because the rng is not on your side like if the other person gets like an armory on the first turn and a rally on their second turn you're pretty much never going to win that game no matter what you do you've pretty much lost so just keep that in mind you're not going to get a hundred percent win rate with any strategy but uh you can get fairly close if you play perfectly every game it's literally just up to rng if you lose Okay, so for this guide, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to stick to the base four decks, okay? This is the ones everybody has. These are the ones you're going to see most often. And generally, a lot of people are happy to play the base four decks because a lot of the, like, harder to get decks are really weird and uh, sort of hard to understand and play with. So most people just like to play the top four. So I'm just going to base this on the top four decks, but obviously you can apply all this stuff to other decks as well and it will still work perfectly, okay? And uh, at some point in the future, I'll probably make a video on each individual deck that you can get um, just because it'll probably take a little bit more explaining why that deck is good and uh, what all the cards do and then also like what it's good to pair it with, okay? So anyway, jumping into the patrons, okay? The first one we're going to look at is St. Pelin, okay? So essentially all this guy does is if you pay two par and you have an agent card in your cooldown pile, you can move that to the top of your draw deck. So for example, you have the Bankrai Sentinels in your cooldown pile. If you pay two power, you can put it to the top of your draw deck. You can instantly guarantee you're gonna draw that next turn. Now, this isn't always that useful. This is mostly only useful if you want to get a combo out. And it's also mostly only useful if you want to sacrifice a card in the next turn to sort of push yourself to 40 to win the game. So I don't use this patreon all that much the only time i would use it is if i'm going to get a combo off with example with the crew deck um if i want to sacrifice something or if i generally just want to get a patron victory and uh, i need to turn that one in general to win so the second patron is grandmaster halalu or i don't know how to say this word but th that's the best attempt you're going to get from me at it so basically what this guy does is it lets you sacrifice one of your cards and you gain prestige equal to the cost of the card minus one so for example, if I were to sacrifice this Halley Kingsman, I would get nine prestige, okay? Now, this is really powerful. Again, if you're just wanting to get ahead of your opponent, if you want to push 40 first, if you happen to have like this Kingsman card and you can sacrifice that, you're probably, you know, gonna win based on the power you've already got that turn plus the nine. It's gonna be very, very hard for them to catch up. And especially if you can get one of the cards, let's use a patron twice, and you can sacrifice two fairly high level cards it's almost impossible for your opponent to catch up a lot of wins i get come from this so a lot of times i'll just like double smash this patron and like they cannot catch up because i've got like over 15 par in that one turn and that uh, it's still fairly early game and they cannot possibly get me okay so the third patron is going to be the duke of crows so this one's really really good but you need to know when to use it and don't waste it okay so Essentially, this one gives you par equal to the amount of coins you have, minus one. So if you have 10 coins, you're going to get nine par, okay? Again, this is really amazing for pushing the 40 boundary, which is the win, essentially. So if you can get over 40 and they can't catch you, you win the game. So essentially, I see a lot of people in my games, personally, they use this crew on like six coins, seven coins uh, in the early game to try and build a lead for no reason. And that pretty much secures them a loss. So don't do that, okay? Leave this sort of for in and around the 40 mark because if you're using like the you know the grandmaster cards and you can you can get a couple of uh cards that give you six coins and you know you're able to buy a lot of stuff and you see yourself on 15 coins and you're on like 25 and you can just bang the crow out you can push yourself up to like pretty much 40 uh, or a little bit over depending on how much power you had that turn they pretty much can't catch you unless they have a really perfect hand which is unlikely they're going to get like they're never going to catch you and you're going to win the game and uh, the same thing applies for if you're going to push 80. So if you're in a position where you guys are kind of close on par near the 40 mark, I would still not use the Duke of Crows card. And I would just sort of wait until you're going to get close to the 80 mark and use this card um, 
<clears throat> so I would wait here both. I'd wait until you're about to get close to the 80 mark and you can guarantee a win by hitting 80 and then I'll probably bang the uh, Duke of Crows Patreon out and I just try and just insta win at 80 because it doesn't matter if you get 80 and they're on 79 you're going to instantly win and they don't get a chance to come back. So the fourth patron is going to be uh, the Psychic Lore Master. Okay, so this is probably the worst of the three in my opinion. So I don't use it a lot unless, again, I'm going for a patron victory or they have something I really, really don't want them to have on the field. But that's rare, to be honest. Um, most of the time, I would, if I want to knock out an enemy sort of agent card, I would just use my par or I would use one of the little cards on the field to cost a couple of coins to knock out an agent card if there is one. Um, this is sort of a last resort for me, or if I'm going for a patron victory. So yeah, basically all this does is you pay four coins and you can get rid of one of their agents that are on the field, okay? So again, not not amazing, but um, there are times where it's useful. Okay, and then the treasury patron is basically just going to turn any card you have into a voucher worth two coins, okay? So for me, this is really, really good at the start of the game. So if you get your fortify, for example, it gives you one power. But it takes away from the coins that you would have. So instead of having five coins, you'd have four coins and a one par. So I don't like that. So as soon as I get that, I like to double my coins essentially. Get rid of the fortify. So like I then have six coins if I ever pull that sort of hand again. And again, just throughout the game, if there's nothing really, really amazing in this door and I don't have a lot of coins to be refreshing things, I just literally hit the treasury button and build my coins up. So whenever a good card appears, I'm ready to buy it. So a lot of the time people buy sort of average cards, like really like not that good cards. They try and refresh the middle and they don't build up their money. And you can just take advantage of that. Like if they're not building their money and you are, you're going to get the better cards a lot faster and you're just going to snowball um, into the victory and they can't do anything about it. So it's really, really key to be doubling your gold money here um, and not forgetting about that essentially. So now I've gone over all the patrons again. I, I mentioned patron victory. If you don't know what that means, it's essentially whenever you use a patron, it essentially turns to point towards you or it turns to be neutral or it turns to your opponent. So if you can get all four pointing towards yourself, you'll instantly win. And then obviously if they get all four pointing to them, they'll instantly win. So always keep an eye on those. Make sure there aren't too many facing them. Generally, if there's two patrons facing them fully and two neutral, you want to turn one of the neutral ones to yourself or turn one of the ones facing them to neutral just because if they happen to get a card where they can use two patrons in one turn they can instant win okay so keep that in mind it has happened to me a couple of times because i'm not paying attention um and it's something that if you're in the lower ranks or if you're a beginner it's something that people are going to do to you a lot because they're going to expect you to not notice so just try and keep an eye on that because that is a either a free win for you in the lower ranks or it's uh, an easy way to avoid losing quickly if you're paying attention. Okay, so I'm gonna go over all of the decks and all of the cards quickly, okay? If you are already familiar with all the cards and all the decks and what are the best ones, what are the worst ones, feel free to skip this bit, but um, I think it's really beneficial just to hear my reasoning on why cards are good, bad, why you want them, why you don't, okay? So the first card here is Peck in the Duke of Crows deck. You wanna keep this throughout the whole game if you're using the Duke of Crows deck because this is a card, it's you pretty much get at the start and it's going to really help your combos okay so i would never really get rid of this unless you have like multiple multiple purple cards in your deck already so the black feather nave i would say is a good card late game and it's not that great early game because you have to combo three times to get your draw card personally i would sort of avoid buying this and try and beat the other person into buying this in the early game and then in the later game i would give this more priority so i can draw more cards um, again the murder of crows now this is such a cheap card generally this is only good if you can combo with another purple but based on the fact that you have peck in your deck from the very start um, you can get you know essentially three coins two par um, plus another coin from peck itself so a really good combo if you can get peck and that in the same hand so i would always buy the murder of crows card no matter when it is in the game so the plunder card I think is one of the best cards in the game essentially because it lets you draw another card instantly. So it's almost as if this card isn't in your deck. It's like this is not hindering your hand in any way. This is just literally allowing you to draw another card right away. Plus this adds the combos of other purples so it's an amazing thing to have. And it has three different draw combos so if you have four purples you can just keep drawing and drawing and drawing and just get a massive massive combo. So really really good card I'd recommend buying that as soon as you can 
So the Black Feather Knight, again, this is a average card. People might think this is really good. It's okay at best. So get one coin for playing it. It does stay in the field, but they don't have to target it. So they can essentially ignore it if they want to. Um, it's only got three health, so it's easy to destroy it uh, with three par. And the combo for using, you know, three on it is only two coins at two par. So it's not amazing. I get it if I have an, you know, abundance of coins and a lot of purples already, but Again, it's something you want to try and let your opponent buy, maybe, um, so they waste their coins. So, Black Feather Brigand, again, this is okay. This is like an alright card, but again, one coin for playing it. It is an Asian card, so it has two health, but it's really easily destroyed. It gets destroyed almost instantly every turn because someone's always going to get two par. And you have to combo three times to draw one card. So, again, in the late game, sure, this is an okay card, but in the early game, I would avoid it. Just because it's going to waste your coins a little bit. So Tolo Silver, I would buy this every single time you see it. This is one of the, the best purple cards in my opinion. So instantly it gives you two coins, okay? So at the early game, this is really good because it's essentially as if you use the red of gold. Plus, if you get one more purple, you're going to be able to draw another card, which is amazing. And then if you do another combo, you get another free coin. Um, and it's so cheap, it's only four coins, so you can almost always afford it. So it's just really good to get this in your deck and uh, just buy as many of these as sort of come up. So the Law of Sovereign Roost, again, this is a good card in the late game, pretty bad in the early game, okay? So whenever you have a lot, a lot of coins and you need to draw another card, um, because maybe you have a good purple stack going on or you have Rally in your deck and you just want to draw a card on the chance of getting that out, this is fine. Um, combo this three times as cards an opponent card, which is, you know, fine. But in the early game, you're not going to be able to get three combo. And also it's a contract, so it uses your four coins for one turn. And if you're only going to be drawn, you know, if you're going to be paying four coins to draw a card and it comes out as one coin from your deck, it's pretty useless. So I would just avoid this early and use this in the late game. So Pilfer, again, this is a really good card. I'll buy this pretty much at any point in the game unless you can see a rally or an armory that is up beside it. That's pretty much two of the only cards I would take over this card. Um, again, as soon as you play it, it's a draw card. So it's almost as if it's not in your deck. It's not a hindrance. It's just allowing you to basically add the combos and draw other cards uh, into your hand which is amazing really it just really really helps and again the two combo is drawing other cards so really easy to get two card draws from this one so pull of shadows again really good card in my opinion so you get two power from using it which lets you build up a little lead early so two power early every time you use the card is kind of good the draw card function when you combo it with one other purple card is really good it's very cheap to buy and if you combo it with four purple cards you actually get three coins which helps you you know in buying other coins from the store or it helps you with hitting the crew card at the end of your turn so i would always buy this if you see it as well it's a really high priority card so total flash again um pretty similar to some of the other cards high priority only costs four coins gives you two coins right away so early game this is very good for building your deck and if you combo with one of the purple you draw a card so really good i would buy that pretty much all the time unless you have a much better card available to you uh squawk and or tree so again i would buy this because you know it's a draw card right away i've already explained why that's so good um it's you know combo in three is draw another card which is amazing especially in the later game and then combo in four in the late game gives you four par so this is one of the rare cards that gives you par and draw ability so i would always try and buy this sort of no matter what stage of the game you're at unless there's something way better like a rally on the field and then the scratch card so this is sort of buying average card in my opinion so this is okay in the early game just because you might get the combo two and get your three coins and your two par but um in the later game this is kind of a hindrance so if you did buy some of these in the early game i would probably destroy them with your um, grandmaster patron just to get rid of it so you can just draw your better cards and basically this card has no draw function in it so you want to have all your purple cards with another draw card function at some point so you can just keep pulling from your deck um and it gets to the stage where you can just pull your entire deck out at once so yeah that's the duke of crows deck it's in my opinion one of the strongest ones i would choose that almost every single game that i'm playing as i really like it it's actually strange to play without this deck in my opinion Okay, so we're going to go over all the Grand Master cards now, okay? So the starter card you get here is Good Shipment. It only gives you one coin, but I would essentially keep this in your deck until you have all your normal gold cards doubled, just because if you happen to get um, a couple of the gold cards, you can combo them, and it lets you use like a patron twice or 
will let you grab a card from the middle for free so i would keep this in your deck up until the point where you don't need it anymore and you're not going to be using gold cards to combo okay so the Abbey Mine is an okay card. Essentially, it's a contract. So you would only really use this in the event where you have a lot of coins and you want to get rid of something. So something else can come into the middle that might be better. Or you'd only use this if you're going to be getting combos if you've already used two other gold cards. So you can get the six coins from this one card, okay? Otherwise, I would leave this on the field and let your opponent sort of waste their coins on it. So next card is the Oathman. So this is an okay card. It's pretty average it's not amazing but it's it's okay early game if it's the only thing you can possibly buy um essentially you get two coins for playing it and it goes on the field so if they don't destroy it you get an extra two coins every turn which is a benefit and um, will really help if they're too stupid to destroy it but nine times out of ten they know about it and they destroy it um if you can combo this card with anything like even if you can buy an ebony mine on the field or if you can use your good shipments card from your deck as well you're able to get a card worth five from the tavern for free now early game this is really good for example if you can grab a, like a, a purple card like a toll of flesh or a pull of shadows for free and then another thing comes out like a another pull of shadows you know you can really start stacking stuff quite early for basically no coins and you're going to get really far ahead of your opponent but this card isn't amazing it does cost six so there's usually something better you can buy for it and you kind of usually want to leave this on the field for your opponent to buy because it is actually fairly rare that you want to have a card from the middle that costs five or less and you do actually have to take a card so even if you don't want to take a card you're gonna have to take one so you might end up with like a really awful card in your deck and it can ruin your whole play okay so the next card is the Hallow kingsman so essentially this card is really good and really bad okay so Basically, it's bad because it costs 10 coins and there's almost no scenario where you can't get a better coin or <clears throat> there's almost no scenario where you can get a better card for 10 coins and close to no scenario where you wouldn't really just be using the Duke of Crows patron card to get ahead or sacrificing this card. Just sort of keep that in mind, but it is a really expensive card. It has one health, so it's really easy to destroy it. The only time really personally I would buy this card is if it's very, very early and I magically got the 10 coins or if I'm literally just going to use it to sacrifice. So for custom seizure, apparently I don't like this card at all. It wastes a slot in your deck. It costs you four coins to buy. Um, you can only get a card up to level five or most of the cards you want to get are over level five. And again, if you play this card, you have to take a level five or less card. So. You can always go for the, the method of not playing the card and just ending your turn. That's also fine. Okay, so the next one is Currency Exchange. This is a really, really good card, okay? It gives you six coins on use, plus you can remove two things on your turn from the tavern, which is just really, really good. So you can just take two really awful cards away. You have a new six coins to use on something that comes out. Nine times out of ten, you can afford it. And if it's good, you get the first pick at it because you remove them on your turn. And if you combo this with one other card, you can use two patrons, which again is really amazing because this card being worth seven, you can essentially sacrifice that for six par and anything else on the field you can sacrifice. So you can probably get over 10 par really easily in that one turn, or you can use that to get a patron victory. Um, this is a really nice card overall, probably one of the best in the gold deck. So then we have the house marketplace card again a really good card gives you six as soon as you use it. If you combo this, essentially you get to draw one card from the middle worth seven. Usually there's something really good there worth seven. You know, you can grab Rally with this card. Um, so I would always just try and use this card. And again, it's good to sacrifice because it costs eight. Next card we have is the Hireling. So again, I don't rate this card very highly at all. It's maybe okay in the early game for the sole fact that if you combo, you get one card for free worth five. But again, if you use that ability, you have to take the card. You have no choice. And it only gives you one coin per turn. But if they don't destroy it, it is a free coin every turn. So... It's sort of average to bad in my opinion. I would almost never take this card unless they have a really good deck and I have to do something in a desperate attempt to win, but I don't like this card at all. So Hostile Takeover, again, it's not a great card in my opinion. So you get only one power from using it. If you don't combo it, it's otherwise a useless card. It costs five, so it's fairly expensive for a card you don't really want. Um, you can acquire something from the tavern with up to seven coins. 
which generally there'll be something good there but again if you use this you do have to pick something so you can't get stuck with a really awful card in the event there's nothing nice that you want and also sacrificing this isn't amazing because you only get four sort of R for sacrificing it so i would not for really take this one luxury exports a really good card amazing early game if you can get this in your first few turns basically it gives you three coins on use really 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 good plus it combos with some other cards so if you use this and you have your good shipment in the same hand and you have something like an ebony man pop up you can get like so many coins really early in the game and it can really push you over the edge and you can uh, buy the really good cards in that turn so the Kwame egg mine again this is really similar to the ebony mine essentially you only want to use this card if you can get combos or if you have a fair amount of coins already and you're looking to get rid of something in the middle that isn't going to go into your deck and ruin it so being a contract you can buy this it gives you two coins back so essentially it only costs you one coin really um, and then a new card will come out and that might be nice and you can just buy that so there's a couple of upgrade cards you might come across again these are fairly similar to what we've seen so the highly kind slur acquire one card up to level nine it has two health this time but still fairly similar to the other card except the combo is you can remove a card from the tavern in my opinion i would almost never buy this unless i'm going to sacrifice it in the next turn because it is pretty bad and then the last one we have there is going to be the house embassy so actually pretty good card is slightly better than the house marketplace because it gives seven coins but it has the same combo effect so again really good card and a good for sacrificing so we're going to go into the Sigic lore master deck now so the base card you get here is the mainland inquiries card you get one coin for that um essentially after you get all your other coins doubled i would then get rid of this for a double coin because it isn't really that good you don't really get many combos with the blue deck in my opinion um you don't really need this card so i just change it into two coins so i can uh, buy better stuff from the center so the Agur's Council, essentially this is a good card in the end game because it lets you shuffle your deck, basically it lets you just take three irrelevant things from your draw pile and uh, put them away so you're just getting the better cards. It also only costs three coins so it's good for just getting another card into the middle which might be better than that card uh, if you have a lot of coins available and it's a contract so it doesn't actually go into your deck so early game there's literally no point in taking this whatsoever because it's just going to ruin your coins is going to potentially give them a really good card in the middle that they can buy over you um, because you won't have that many coins and there's no point in shuffling out coins really that early on uh, because you're just going to draw more coins so the next card is prophecy so this is actually a really good card so on drawing this you get three coins which is really really good in the early game especially and you get to remove two cards from the middle so this is really good on two levels so on your turn you can get rid of two cards and maybe buy something really good that pops up and also if you know you don't have the coins to buy something like a rally you can get rid of it so the other person can't get it either so next card is Sigic Apprentice so this is an okay card as it kind of average as a sort of if you have a fair amount of coins and you have nothing to do with it it's okay to have this on the field because either your opponent has to waste three power destroying it or every single turn you can just throw away four awful cards you don't want so you can draw your better cards so it's okay it's, it's kind of good if your opponent lets it live but it is easily destroyed and it doesn't have any benefit really other than letting you sort of shuffle your deck and there are better cards for this like the dreaming give we'll get to later on so the next card is pre-science okay so essentially this card lets you draw two cards and remove two from the middle so again in the early game this is an average card this is okay if it's like your first second turn maybe it's okay but generally i would avoid this card and make your opponent buy it because it's a waste of coins most of the time so next one is Sigic insight again not a great card i don't usually pick this up i try and make my opponent buy it uh, just to fill their deck with something a little bit awful it does let you toss three cards so if you have to buy it it's okay it does remove two cards from the tavern but that's pretty much all it does there's, there's no point to having this essentially it, uh, it doesn't really give you any power doesn't give you you know any coins it's just sort of there to, to shuffle your deck which isn't amazing in my opinion so the next card is the ch council again this is very similar to the agura card so it just lets you take three cards from your deck and just throw them in your cooldown pile which is pretty good um it's only good in the late game really it's not good in the early game it's a waste of coins 
So in the late game, you can use this as a contract. It doesn't go into your deck, so that's a benefit. And actually throw away like coin cards so you can get your actual good cards out. Um, so it's good in the late game, but don't buy it early because it's the waste of coins, okay? Do something better with your coins. Okay, so the scrying globe again in the very, very early game, like I'm talking the first like three turns. This is a fairly good card because it gives you two coins on use, which is more than what you'd probably have because you got a lot of single coin cards at that stage. And it lets you take away two cards from your draw deck and put it in your cooldown, which again, if you only have like one good card at that stage, it's kind of a benefit because you can just get rid of the, the coin, the one coin cards, things like that and uh, draw your better cards but this does get less beneficial later in the game and once you get to like you know 20 prestige things like that i would just sort of destroy this card and get rid of it if you still have it so time mastery is again one of the useless cards i would never really buy so you can remove one card from a tavern and you can toss the next two cards in your deck but again it's something i would never buy it's just sort of there to fill up slots i would try and make my opponent buy that um, has no real benefit so i would never really want this in my deck at any point so the dreaming cave is probably one of the best cards in this deck um and even in the game in fairness it's one of the cards you really want to go for as soon as you see it you want to buy it unless there's like a rally on armory up on the field you want to buy this card okay the reason why it's so good is it instantly lets you draw another card so it's almost as if that card has no effect on your deck okay you can still draw the card you would have drawn without this card in your deck but you now get the benefit of tossing the four cards from your draw pile and it just basically lets you select your best cards so you're pulling the best ones out and uh getting the most uh coins and the most power per turn so there's a couple of upgrade cards so one of them is sephora's insight again i don't think it's a good card i think it's pretty trash cost you five goes into your deck you can remove two cards from a tavern and toss three that's not really good it's, it's pretty bad it's a waste of a slot in my opinion i would never have that and then something very similar for the Sigic Relic Master. So again, you get one coin for using him. And you get to remove, you know, up to four cards from your draw deck. But again, it's a pretty awful card. It costs you six coins. It does go onto the field. So it's very slightly better than the Sigic Apprentice card. But again, it's just something you don't really need or want. Because it's going to take up a deck slot. Okay, so the last deck we're going to look at here is St. Pelin. Okay, so this is probably the strongest deck in terms of being able to win a game quickly. So a lot of these cards are must have. You need to really buy a couple of these cards. But the first one here is Fortify. Okay, so Fortify, in my opinion, is unnecessary. As soon as I draw this card, I use the treasury to turn this into two gold because this card in the early game really, really, really makes a mess of your ability to buy other things. So if you happen to draw this card, you're only going to get four coins on your turn, which means you can't buy something good that's worth five coins. Or if you're going second, you only get five coins. You can't get the good card worth six. So I would destroy this as quickly as you can just to get more coins early. It's going to be a benefit. So the next card is Siege Weapon Folly. So this is a really, really good card. You want to buy this pretty much anytime you see it. Okay. There's very little cards you would pick over this. And those are Rally and the Armory. So this card is so good because it's only four coins. Okay. It gives you four power on use. And if you combo it with one other red card, you get two coins. So amazing card i would definitely buy this at any point um and if you get this on your first turn or two turns you should almost win the game from this because it's that strong so the bank rise centuries is the next card it's fairly expensive um usually there's a better card you can buy instead of this it isn't a card that goes instantly onto your field so it isn't as good as some of the other red cards it does go in your deck and takes up a space the only reason i really would buy this is so as you can a use the four health it has to take away from some of your opponent's uh, power game and b because you can sacrifice it okay so the only real benefit to this card is that you can absorb some damage from your opponent and then sacrifice it for six coins but uh, it's a sort of an average card and i wouldn't rush to buy it so the next card is the banneret so again this is a fairly good card but it's not something you need to buy it's not that beneficial so again, it doesn't instantly go on your side of the field like some of the other cards. You gain three power for using it, and it's worth nine coins, so you can sacrifice it for eight. So using this on any turn, you can essentially get 11 power if you sacrifice it and play it. So it's fairly good, but it costs a whole lot of coins, and it takes up one of your draw slots in your deck. Um, so it's, it's sort of up to you if you want to buy this one. I usually do if I have a lot of coins, but if there's something else like slightly good, 
for a little bit less i'll usually buy it like one of the purple draw cards or a rally anything like that also most of the time your opponent can't afford this card so it doesn't matter if you buy something else and then come back for this because nine times out of ten they can't afford nine coins so the next card is going to be archer's volley so again you want to buy this most of the time okay so it gives you three power on use and you combo it for one coin so not quite as good as some of the other cards but it's still pretty good and early game you definitely want to buy this okay so reinforcements is an okay card okay it's, it's fairly good early game because it gives you the two coins if you can combo it with one other red card you get two par and you get an extra par if you can combo it with three red cards but it's rare you're going to have three red cards in the same hand and it's sort of not that much par and not that much coins so in the very early game if you get one of these you know sure that's okay but generally i would leave this on the field for someone else to buy and i would buy something a little bit more beneficial because this does take up a deck slot and it doesn't have that much benefit so then we get to rally okay so as far as i'm concerned it's the best card in the game at the moment okay so on playing this you get six par if you use one other rare card you get to draw another card which is you know drawn is really powerful in itself especially when you've got six par on that turn already it's worth seven coins so if you want to sacrifice this you're going to get your six par plus another six for sacrificing it so you get 12 in that turn guaranteed a lot of times just playing rally and sacrificing it it's enough to push yourself over 40 and your opponent can't catch up because that's just a lot of par to get in one move from one card so it's just a one of the best ones really you want to keep an eye for it because it's uh pretty much something you want to instant buy over anything else in the game so the port colors again it's a pretty basic card it's not that great maybe if you get this in like your first turn your second turn it can be okay to buy but it really doesn't give you any coins or the game you want to focus on coins over par okay so i think a lot of people get beta into buying this card um, in the early game thinking oh it gives me two par but it's actually really not that good so i generally skip over it and make someone else buy it um the armory here okay this is the second best card in the game in my opinion so cost you five coins you get five par and you get a coin back from it so that's amazing if you can draw this on like your first or second turn you're almost guaranteed to win the game unless you do something wrong or they get really good rng later in the game and then the shield bearer card again this is actually a decent card now it is a contract so as soon as it's destroyed it disappears forever so i would only buy this if i have sort of excess coins um in the early game or the mid game um it's pretty good in the late game if you have a lot of coins as well um it gives you one par on play so really there's no point in having it other than the fact that it absorbs five of your opponent's par this keeps them behind you a little bit which can be beneficial if you're pushing for 40 and if you want to you can sacrifice this for five par so it's it's an okay card if you're going to buy it and sacrifice it in the same turn um a lot of the times that's what i do um or i'd wait one turn let it take a little bit of power from the opponent and then sacrifice it but um there's definitely other things that are better than this so just this is just something if there's nothing else good that you can buy um to get yourself a little bit of a lead but it's not an amazing card it's just okay Okay, and then we have the upgrade card so we have knight commander i don't think this is very good at all so cost nine coins three par on play it's maybe okay to buy and sacrifice much like the banneret card um only thing being is that you know we don't really care about the healing effect it doesn't really do anything but give us three par you know if you can keep this on the field for a long time maybe it's a benefit but in general i feel like this takes up too much of a slot and it's only really good for a sacrifice it's not really good for a, a long-term thing so it's an average card it, it costs so much that it's rare that you're going to be able to buy it and not have a better option knights of st pelin again play effect is one card par is you know plus one when you combo it, it really doesn't do very much again doesn't instantly go on your field because it's not a contract it costs seven coins nine times out of ten there's a better card you can buy or you can do something better with the coins other than buy this card it's only good if you can sacrifice it but again you have to wait to draw it and it takes up a draw spot so again not amazing in my opinion and the last card is the legion's arrival so if you happen to get this in the early game yeah sure no problem because it gives you two coins which is better than your, your one coins you would usually draw 
but as you get like into sort of mid game territory this is a useless card and you don't really want this at all so if you combo this with three rare cards you get three power which is very very rare you're ever going to have three rare cards in my opinion in one hand and the two coin thing doesn't really be much of a benefit you want to have actual cards in the later game so i would just pretty much not buy this card either okay okay so now we're going to go over the treasury okay now this is going to be in every single game okay you just use this no matter what decks you're chosen uh, essentially just clicking on this patron you can get two coins but you have to sacrifice a card to get those two coins so essentially what you do is you can click this patron and it turns one of your cards into a voucher worth two coins so you can now you know every time you pick that out of your deck you can get two coins so that's pretty good and it's something you want to work on early game is just hitting this patron quite a lot and getting uh, a lot of your coins doubled up so you can buy better stuff in the store uh, the first card we're going to come across is ambush so again a pretty good card it's a contract doesn't go into your deck so i quite like it uh it's only three coins so it's really good and it knocks out of place up to two of your opponent's agents so they could have two level nines on the field and for only three coins you can knock them both out and back into their uh, cooldown pile so pretty good card in my opinion so the next one is barter so again a really good card costs one coin this is good on your own turn so you can get something fresh in the marketplace so you can buy a better card it's also good if you have a very small amount of cards and you can see something good like a rally because then you can reset it and your opponent can't have it so really beneficial to use those the black sacrament so again really good just knocks out one of the enemy's agents for only two coins pretty good card we have imprisonment here so for five coins again this is being a contract so it doesn't go into your deck um you gain four power for five coins so if you've already used the crew or you don't want to use the crew yet uh, this is a good way of transferring your coins into power um, obviously harvest season a really really good card um again contract worth two coins you essentially just grab this and let you draw one more card from your deck so sometimes if you're going to get a really good combo but you can't quite get enough draw cards this will really help you pull out like a, another part of your crow deck or help you pull out like a, a rally card something really good to push you to the win uh, we have blackmail so again that's three coins again really good card uh gives you two power on use and it's a contract so it's just good for spamming if you have a lot of coins and don't want to use your crew rag picker i think is actually really underrated um really good card so essentially that lets you delete one card from your deck for only three coins this is really good sort of um in the later game or even in the early game just for deleting your like one coin vouchers or your coin vouchers in general so you're only drawing cards that give you a benefit and then the last card we have here is the thief i'm not too sure how to say this one but uh yeah basically it's like you use two patrons in one turn and this can literally win you a game so again as i mentioned earlier if you can use like the grand master patron twice and you can sacrifice like two level nine cards you're pretty much probably going to win the game from there because you've just got so far ahead on par so again these are all pretty much really good cards in the neutral deck and these will appear at any point but um yeah just, just keep an eye out for these and they are really beneficial to use at specific times so uh the more you play the more you'll, you'll get a feel for them okay so now i'm just going to go over the cards that you must buy in order okay of like what you need to buy and in order of stuff that's pretty nice but you don't necessarily need okay so the first card is going to be rally if you ever see a rally buy that that's probably the most beneficial card you could ever buy it almost guarantees a win in itself just by having that one card um, if you see the armory again buy that it's so good it's such a good card if you happen to get that in like your first or second turn again it can really almost guarantee you a win because you're just going to get so far ahead on par and they can't catch you unless they get something really rng uh the third thing is going to be siege weapon volley again it's really really good it gives you four power per time you use it only costs you four coins if you get that in the early game you're going to pull away and it's going to be hard for them to catch you uh, fourth card is going to be the dreaming cave so again this lets you take away up to four cards from the top of your draw deck letting you get your better cards out quickly and it also lets you draw one card so it's just amazing really um, especially if you're pairing it with uh, the purple deck after that the purple draw cards are something you want to look into so the likes of the plunder bird um troll of flesh things like that you know um silver cards just anything that lets you draw more cards really beneficial you just want to be drawn and drawn and drawn so you can get you know multiple combos get lots of coins lots of power in one turn that's the key is to get in big turns so the purple draw cards are really really helpful 
and if none of these cars are on the field but you can get like a house marketplace something like that you know any of the gold cars that are going to let you basically next time you play it get six coins right away uh something that can be sacrificed for a large amount of uh power or something that can be comboed for example you can use two patrons or you can grab a level seven card for free um those are pretty good not as good as the stuff above but those are something you generally want to go for if there's no other option okay and if you just sort of stick to that and you stick to the tactics you should win almost every single game you play unless they get really good rng okay so if you're playing it perfectly you're following all the steps up till now you're sort of buying the the best cards in the order you just you paid attention to what i've just said about the decks you should pretty much win most of your games unless they you know, rng you basically where they just pull better cards and you can't do anything about it no matter how well you play so there's two more things to go over uh, and then we'll get into an example game okay and i'll just show you me playing and i'll talk you through the game and just show you exactly what i did in the game why i did it what i bought what mistakes maybe the opponent made and uh, we'll just go from there okay and it's a ranked match there's two ways you can pretty much instantly win the game okay so the first one is pushing over 40 and your opponent can't match your prestige in their next turn okay so essentially if you're on 30 prestige and you've built a bit of a lead and you happen to pull for example a rally card that's going to give you six par and if you sacrifice it it's going to give you another six okay so you're going to get 12 par you're going to be on 42 it is almost impossible in that early stage of the game for your opponent to get 22 par or prestige from any source um so this is pretty much something you want to aim for if you're a little bit ahead or you know you can push like a lot a lot of prestige in one turn you want to do it to try and hit 40 first to put your opponent under pressure and nine times out of ten they can't catch you this is also a good reason to not use the duke of crows patron in the early game so again if you're on like 30 and you happen to have 11 coins if you hit the duke of crows you're going to push yourself over 40 they're probably not going to be able to catch you and you're probably going to win um, so this is why it's important not to use that patron in the early game for a low amount of coins because you take away this win chance from yourself basically and then the second thing which is where you instantly win no matter if they can catch you or not is if you push 80 first you will instantly win the game okay even if you went like second in the game and you hit 80 we went first in the game they get no chance to have another turn you just instantly win the game from hitting 80 points so again you don't want to use the crow too early um if you can sacrifice any card so if you have a rally and you're thinking to yourself i want to keep my rally but if you destroy it and it's going to get you over 80 points from sacrificing it you 100 percent want to do it uh you always want to be looking out for the combo cards that let you use two patrons so you can maybe sacrifice two cards and push the 80 because it doesn't matter what you destroy if you hit 80 you win just keep that in mind okay um, a lot of my wins come from people who are focused on building their deck and focusing on the cards they want to buy building their wealth and they don't really look at these checkpoints of 40 and 80 um, and that's where you can pull out easy wins okay guys so we're going to go into an example game here okay so i'm playing ranked i think at the time of this video i'm rank eight or something um, when i'm playing this game so i'm just going to show you exactly what happened um everything i get why I make moves, why that's a benefit, and uh, why I win, and maybe some mistakes the opponent made, okay? So off the first draw, I get exactly five coins, okay? And I can see on the field there's two armories, so I want to buy one of them, okay? So this is what we call like a really good RNG sort of marketplace. So in the marketplace, there was two armories, and I bought one, and immediately a Siege Weapon Folly came up. So... It's just going to be a pretty fast game because we're both going to be able to buy really high power cards. So I can do nothing else while I end my turn. Now, he got five coins in his turn and he bought the army as well, which is the perfect move to do. Now, you see, I got Fortify, so I only got four coins. So I buy a Siege Weapon of Folly uh, because that, again, is the best card on the field there. It's probably third best, maybe fourth best card in the game. So right off the rip, I've just literally got... An armory and a siege weapon volley which is nine par if i get both those in one hand and i'm essentially just gonna do that and then my turn um because there's nothing else i can do but i should win the game now he should not be able to beat me at any stage because i have such powerful cards on my second turn so we see here he's just doubling his coins because there's nothing he can buy and there's nothing he can do otherwise 
I'm just going to do the same for most of the game because I'm ahead now. So I don't have to worry about him catching me. I don't have to worry about buying other cards. I just have to be playing my own cards and I will win. It's on him now to be making moves, try and upset me because I'm clearly about to win this game. So he got six coins, but there's nothing on the field he can really buy. He doesn't want to buy imprisonment because then he can't use the treasury. So he just resets the cards. Nothing good came up. So we just used the treasury to double his coins and that left us on the field. And we can see I've just pulled out both of my cards and got nine par plus six coins. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double my money here. I could have bought imprisonment, but like I said, that can open up for a card to come out for him. And because I'm winning right now, I don't want to have that opportunity for him. So I'm just going to do nothing but just try and play the cards I have. So again, right here, I just got nine par plus my fortify which is 10 par i'm going to sacrifice the fortify because i don't like it i much prefer to have two coins than one par from a card so that's what we're going to do now you see he's been forced to buy some pretty awful cards here like the scrying orb and he's been forced to reset the middle twice because he has no options he did get a siege weapon volley which is pretty good but at this stage in the game i'm too far ahead for him to catch in my opinion i don't think he'll be able to beat me at all so here there's a plunder card on the field which is one of the best in the game so i've got six coins i'm gonna buy the plunder card okay so this is gonna let me draw more which is gonna give me a higher chance of pulling out my power cards which is gonna make me win faster he got a decent amount of coins there but there was nothing good on the field for him really to buy so he bought luxury exports but at the point he's in at the game so at the point of the game we're in right now that's just a hindrance to his deck because he really needed something it's going to give him par something that can really get him back in the game something that can draw him more cards but he didn't get that um so he's just trying to buy anything just to open up and get another card to come out from the middle so he got a purple draw card which is actually a really good card he got but um because i have so many power cards i don't think it's going to be helpful for him so again i'm just going to be doubling my money all i'm going to be doing is leaving everything in the middle for him to buy so i want him to have to use all his coins to buy that so he can't really catch me okay now you can see here he's panicking he's buying things like imprisonment um which can obviously if he buys that that only leaves him with two coins so i can then if there's anything good comes out i get first dibs on it so if a purple draw card comes out i get it if a rally comes out i get it if an armory comes out i get it okay so he's just desperately trying to catch up in prestige because he knows he's really far behind um so he's having to do drastic stuff and that's a situation you don't really want to be in okay so here i make a decision so i have five par already i have a few coins there's nothing i want to buy there's no point in me using the treasury so i'm just gonna use the crew to get myself really far ahead so now i'm 15 ahead it's gonna be almost impossible for him to come back from this and as we can just see i just pulled like the most powerful cards in my deck out so I should win on this turn and he should not be able to come back from it. So he's on 24, I'm on 31. I've just gained 9 par. I get to draw another card from my deck. Use all these coins. Now I'm going to use the sacrifice and sacrifice one of my cards, probably my bird. Um, yeah, and now I'm over 40. So I'm on 45, he's on 24. There's literally no way with the cards I know he has that he can ever get up to 45 to match me. So he has to lose the game no matter what he does yeah use the bird everything you can only get the 34 so that's also uh, an example of pushing 40 as quick as you can that's an example of not wasting your coins and buying things in the middle to give your opponent opportunities and that's just taking an early lead and running with it okay so we got those early power cards and we made sure not to buy much from the middle to give him opportunity we didn't sacrifice them stupidly we didn't do anything that was going to hinder us we just sort of coasted along to the win and uh, we really put the pressure on at the end to push over 40 um, so he could not catch up to us and we didn't let the game go on for too long so some people might have wanted to like toy with him or something or may not have known that they could push the 40 in that scenario so it's just really good to, to make sure that you know where you're at and to, to make sure you're trying to secure the win as quick as possible so yeah hopefully that was uh, helpful for you guys um, hopefully you guys can go on and win a lot of your matches now and get a, a higher rank so I really like playing the game obviously because it gives me a lot of transmute crystals and it's just fun to play. So I quite like the card game. I like getting transmute crystals by not really having to do dungeons or PvP. 
um so this is like one of the, the nice things i do and it's actually not a horrible passive money maker to be honest you get a lot of uh raw materials things like that you can get furnishing plans you can get pictures and so it's not horrible it's a nice thing to do there are some rewards for it um regarding the other four decks so the the four decks like the the red eagle things like that what i'll do is i'll probably make a separate video on each of those individually because it'll take some explanation for the actual deck why they're good what the strategy is and it'll take some uh, explanation as to what's a good combo deck with them okay so a lot of them aren't necessarily great on their own you want to combo with another deck um if you have any questions or any scenarios you want to ask just leave them in the comments and i'll reply to you um so if you have like a weird scenario in your card games and you want to ask me about it what you should do in the situation i'll answer it in the comments but uh yeah if you liked the video remember to leave a like subscribe and i'll see you next time